Hi everyone, okay, this is Magnus Carlsen against Lenier Dominguez, which was played at the MTOL Masters tournament earlier today. Magnus Carlsen is the phenomenal Norwegian chess prodigy, aged 18 and the world number 3 on the FIDE rating list with a rating of 2770, and he's a certain contender for future world champion. Lenier Dominguez, who is Cuban, has come to the fore more recently. Last year he won the World Blitz Championship, and in the previous few years, He's had several great tournament victories, in particular at Barcelona in 2006. He scored 8 out of 9 against top level players for a tournament rating of 29.32. His fight rating at the moment is 27.21. So to get into this game anyway, Carlsen had the white pieces and he opened with d4, to which Dominguez played knight f6, and after c4, g6, knight c3, d5, we're going into the Grunfeld defense, which has been popular at top level ever since it was first introduced by Ernst Grunfeld at a tournament in Vienna in 1922, where he used it to beat Alexander Alekhine, who would later become world champion. Both Garry Kasparov and Bobby Fischer used it regularly, as does Lenier Dominguez. So, this game continues anyway, knight f3, bishop g7, queen b3, d takes c4, queen takes c4, black castle, and e4. And we're all still well within book moves here, and as you can see, white already has a strong center with pawns on e4 and d4. But other than that, black has no major problems or weaknesses. So here Dominguez played knight c6, which is not the most common move here. Like, perhaps he wanted to avoid any preparation Carlsen might have done for this tournament. Like, normal at this stage is just a6, which both controls and prepares the pawn move b5. So, knight c6 and then bishop e2, which is typical of Carlsen's style, choosing the non-forceful continuation. Like, the critical variation at this stage is e5, and after bishop e6, e takes f6, bishop takes c4, f takes g7, king takes g7, and bishop takes c4. Where white has two bishops and a knight against the queen, but it comes at the cost of two pawns and the loss of the initiative, so... It's understandable why Carlsen plays less forcefully, especially in this position, with bishop e2. So then came e5 and d5, which is the best way to fight for an advantage. Like, weaker would have been either knight takes e5, because then knight takes d4, or d takes e5 and knight g4. As, uh, it's pretty harmless and, you know, doesn't secure an edge for white, so d5 is definitely the best way. And Dominguez played knight d4, which is an interesting continuation. It's uh, sacrificing a pawn for activity after knight takes d4, e takes d4, and queen takes d4. So, then he played c6, and then came d6, which is a passed pawn that Carlsen manages to maintain, which isn't always an easy task in the middle game, and it's this pawn that decides the game later, as you'll see, after knight d5, discovering an attack on the queen, so queen d3, the knight takes c3, b takes c3, and queen f6, which is optimistic from Dominguez, he's leaving the pass pawn for now and happy to have done some structural damage to white's pawns on the queen side, he's got uh, two isolated pawns now, and um, he has a little initiative here as well for a sacrifice pawn, so it's uh, one way to go. Another possibility perhaps better at this stage was f5 and after bishop e3 he would have had perhaps better compensation after say for example f takes e4 queen c4 check and rook f7 uh, Fritz gives about half a pawn down here and he's a full pawn down so you know that says he has half a pawn advantage in terms of position but he didn't go for that anyway he played queen f6 and then came uh, bishop b2, just preserving the pawn on c3, rook d8 and rook d1, in turn preserving the pawn on d6. And uh, Lenier was, oh sorry, Dominguez was spending a fair amount of time thinking at this stage, and he was perhaps regretting both his pawn sack and the fact that he'd allowed the pass pawn on d6 to be created. He tried uh, queen e6 here, threatening the A pawn and Carlson was happy to let it fall and simply played F4 so Dominguez took that pawn and now there's material equality but white still has the edge due to the pass pawn on D6 
And black now has one as well, of course, on A7, but it's yet to move and thus nowhere near as dangerous as uh, white's pass pawn. So then came rook d2, queen a5, and queen e3, and bishop d7, which wasn't the strongest move. Like Dominguez had spent a lot of time thinking at this stage and simply wanted to finish development, blockade the d-pawn, and connect his rooks. But better here was bishop e6, with a stronger control over the queen side. So bishop d7 anyway, and king f2 from... Carlson, which is an interesting continuation. Instead of simply castling, he keeps his king close to the center, seeing that exchanges are soon likely and his king will be better placed for potential end games. Closer to the center, he won't have to lose tempo of moving it back over again, which he'll have to do if he castles. So, rook e8, which is applying some pressure down the open file on the pawn on e4, and trying to induce it forward, which would give black f5 here for his pieces, in particular his bishop would be good there and um, yeah so that's what he's trying there and then uh, rook a1 so threatening the queen queen d8 and c4 which induces the exchange of white's bad bishop here on b2 for black's good bishop on g7 and uh, slightly weakens the king's position so bishop takes b2, rook takes b2, b6 Bishop f3 and queen h4 check, which is designed to move the king away from the protection of the queen, with the uh, king g1 just to protect the h2 pawn, and queen f6 and queen d2. Like one of the reasons that Dominguez played that is if Carlson plays e5 now, then queen takes d6 is possible because the king is no longer protecting the queen. So if the pawn takes the queen, then the rook takes the queen here, and black would have won a pawn. So. That's one of the reasons behind uh, the check a few moves ago. So, queen d2, and then g5, which is, uh, you know, trying to create complications in order to save the game as he's run into a bad position here, and also to open up the g file for threats against uh, white's king, but that will prove to be more dangerous for the black king as the game continues. So then came g3, g takes f4, g takes f4, King h8, King h1, Rook g8, which uh, seizes the open file, but in reality there's little danger there, and White's pass pawn still secures a significant advantage. An interesting alternative at this point was a5, and after Rook g1, Rook a b8, e5, Rook takes e5, and after f takes e5, Queen takes f3, check. Queen g2, queen takes g2, king, j t king takes g2, but black would have a pawn for the exchanged and, and reasonable queenside counterplay. Um, the advantage is really no more than in the game continuation, and it's probably in fact preferable to the game continuation. Because um, after rook g8 came e5, queen h4, and queen d4, and now the scales are starting to tip in Carlson's favour again because of his centralized queen which was also the case when he beat Topolov earlier in the same tournament so then came rook g2 sorry rook g7 and rook g2 which is uh, the most solid response from Carlson okay I'm gonna have to do this video in two parts so uh, that's the end of part one